Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. And today, today Gina Young is gonna show you all how to make spaghetti and meatballs. The world loves spaghetti and meatballs. There's a lot of people out here in the world that are intimidated by meatballs and they think it's hard to make. Listen here, I'm gonna show you that it's not hard to make. It's quick and simple and listen here, who doesn't love a nice juicy meatball all covered in cheese on top of spaghetti? I'll cover with cheese. Wait, I'm not gonna sing that song. I'm getting crazy in this kitchen now. <laughs> but listen here, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna make spaghetti and meatballs. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make these meatballs. And that's gonna be our dinner for today. Let me see. The time is 1.57 p.m. I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner, bang it out the way. And then that way, when everybody's hungry, dinner's already made and on the table. All right, so let's get started. Here's what you're gonna need. Okay, everyone, so we have two eggs that you will need, and those are large eggs. You can use medium size if you'd like. We have a medium size onion, a medium size red bell pepper, as well as medium size green bell pepper. I have fresh mushrooms that I've washed off. Make sure if you buy mushrooms, you always wanna wash them off, okay? And I have sweet Italian sausage, and then I have ground beef 80-20. Okay, moving over, I have Italian style panko breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. I have Prego, and I like to use the Garden Harvest, and it's nice and chunky. It has huge chunks of tomato, onion, and garlic, okay? And then I have tomato basil. If you don't want to use these kind, feel free to use any type of spaghetti sauce that you would like to use. Okay, we're gonna use about two tablespoons of the tomato paste. I have milk because you're gonna need to soak your breadcrumbs in the milk so that you can have a nice tender meatball, but we'll get to that. I have two fresh garlic cloves, as well as we'll use a pinch or two of sugar, all right? And over here are spices. I have sea salt, parsley flakes, cracked black pepper, garlic powder and onion powder, and right here, I have fresh parsley, and then I have fresh basil as well. Okay, everyone, make sure that your hands are impeccably clean. We're gonna go ahead and start making our lovely meatballs. Very simple. And if you just wanted to use ground beef only, you can. If you wanted to use turkey, if you wanted to use chicken, if you wanted to do the beef, um, some people use beef, turkey, and chicken, or beef, veal, and lamb, whatever you wanna use for your meatballs would be just fine. But I love to use the ground beef and the sweet Italian sausage. It makes for an amazing, an amazing meatball, okay? Let me wash my hands. Anytime you're dealing with raw meats, you always wanna wash your hands because you don't wanna transfer bacteria to your spices, okay? So we're gonna do just that. All right, now for our spices, and there's another thing that I wanted to tell you about. Ketchup, when I make uh, uh, meatloaf or when I make Meatballs, I use ketchup. It makes for an amazing taste, okay? How much? Just put you some in there, okay? Can you see that? Absolutely you can, okay? Perfect. We want a nice juicy meatball and we're gonna have that. Here's what I'd like to do. I just have everything right there. Let's go ahead and chop up some fresh parsley. When you make meatballs, you have to have fresh parsley, not the dried up parsley. I mean, you can use the dried up, but I highly suggest using fresh. And you're just gonna chop it up just like so, okay? Into small pieces, get it nice and fine, 
and then we'll put that in. And it's just a small bundle. A small bundle is gonna give you that flavor. Now, a lot of you that know me, uh, a lot I will say, is the parsley gonna give it flavor? This parsley won't give flavor. This dried parsley, it gives color, but this one here is very fragrant and it does give flavor, okay? So that's why I say for your meatballs, you must use fresh parsley, all right? I hope that you all are having a great work week. I hope that you all are having a blessed day as well. All right? That's all the chopping I'm going to do for that there, okay? Beautiful. And it's so fragrant. It smells amazing. Sorry about that, everyone. That was my husband calling me. All right. So then we have our ketchup. We have our parsley. You want to put Parmesan cheese in, and the powder kind is just fine. No problems there, okay? Parmesan has salt in it, so be very careful with the salt that you put in here. Parmesan is gonna give you an amazing flavor. Trust me when I tell you this. Let's go ahead and put some onion powder in there, and listen here, don't you dare be afraid to season. Season is what people love. People love to taste flavor. And if you're afraid to season your meat, it's not gonna taste good. <laughs> really, it's that simple, okay? We're gonna put some cracked black pepper. Just like the so, put a nice amount in. That cracked black pepper is good for you. It has antioxidants and it's gonna make it taste good. All right, now with the sea salt, look here. Just a little bit. I know we have a nice amount of meat there, but I'm only gonna put this much salt in all of that meat because like I said, our Parmesan has salt in it. So that's enough. Now, then we go in with panko breadcrumbs, okay? Put you some panko breadcrumbs. The panko breadcrumbs is gonna help to hold your meatballs together. Trust me when I tell you this, okay? And the milk is gonna give you a nice, soft, and moist meatball. I don't know about you all, but I don't want any dried up, dried up meatballs. They gotta be nice and moist, okay? So then let's put milk in, just like so. If you're unsure of how much, just do a little trial. Put a little bit in at a time, okay? I wanna crack these eggs into a separate bowl and then we'll put our eggs into our mixture. I'm gonna go ahead and crack them. You always wanna crack your eggs into a separate bowl because if you were to get eggshell you know, into your mixture, you'd never be able to fish it out. Or if your egg was bad, it would be hard to fish it out, okay? So now we have no eggshell. We have nice, beautiful, fresh eggs. Go ahead and put them bad boys right in there, just like so. All right, my hands. I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, since I've handled the spices, I'm gonna wash my hands, and then I'm gonna dig in right with my hands. There are some of you that say, nope, mm -mm, nope, I can't do it, I'm not gonna do it. If you don't wanna use your hands, then by all means, you don't have to, okay? This is your recipe, you know, you are feeding your family, you do what makes you comfortable. If you wanna use a spoon, then by all means, absolutely you can. But I have these lovely tools here that God has given me, and I'm gonna use them. <laughs> I'm gonna use them, absolutely I am. Okay, now what I also want you all to know is, I don't want you to overwork the meat. If you overwork the meat, just like I tell you all when I'm making meatloaf, if you overwork it, what's gonna happen? You're gonna have a tough meatball. We don't want any tough meatballs. We want them to be nice, soft, and moist. Okay, make sure you get everything well incorporated. All right, and then we're ready to make meatballs. And really, it's that simple, okay? Let me wash my hands. I'll be right back and I'll show you the size that we should make our meatballs. Okay, before we go any further, I want each and every one of you to let me know this in the comment section. How many of you all know the meatball and spaghetti song? 
The one that I was singing in the beginning, let me know in the comment section. I could not get that daggone song out of my head now. So I'm singing the song and it's just stuck in my head. I hate that when I, <laughs> I can't stand it when I have no control over a song that's in my brain that I don't really want to sing. <laughs> and that's what's happening to me right now. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, check me out. You will take your meatballs, okay? And you just roll them, okay? You wanna make them not too big and not too small. But here's the thing, I'm gonna be honest with you. Hey, listen, if you wanted to make yours teeny tiny, then by all means, if that's what you like, then, you know, go ahead and make them teeny tiny. All right, if you wanna make them golf, uh, you know, golf ball size, or if you wanna make them football size, whatever you like, just use this recipe. <laughs> See, this is how I like mine. And honestly, I try my best. Really, I do. I try my best to make them the same size. And if you can't, that's okay, because they're not all going to be the same size. But try your best, too. That way, they all can cook at an even temperature. They'll all get done at the same time. Because if you make some really small and you make some really big, the small ones will get done, and then you'll still have big ones still cooking. Okay, now these are going to get put in the oven on 350 degrees, and I'll let you know exactly how long they take to cook. Okay, I'm going to throw them in the oven. Now, sometimes if I use a really, really lean meat, like ground sirloin, that doesn't have a whole, whole lot of fat, what I will do is I'll just take these bad boys, and I'll just pop them right down into my, my sauce. Okay, and cook them that way because I know that they don't have a lot of fat in them. But these here, they're going to let off some fat. And I want to be able to drain that fat and be able to control how much oil we, you know, we intake. All right, see this? And you can kind of put them close to each other, you know, because they're not going to puff up or anything and stick together. You'll be able to get a nice amount of meatballs out of, that was a two and a half pound ground beef, and then that was a one pound of the Italian sausage. Now, what if you all say, okay, but Gina, that makes way too many meatballs for me. Okay, problem solved. Here's what you do. You're going to take your meatballs and go ahead and cook them all off. Okay, cook them all off. Listen to me closely. Cook them all off in the oven, let them cool down, and whatever you're not going to use, throw them in a freezer bag. Absolutely. Put a date on them, write meatballs on them, and then when you're ready to make spaghetti and meatballs, you pull them, pull them bad boys out the freezer, you throw them into your sauce, and voila, you have spaghetti and meatballs, okay? So never fear if you have too much. I'm making a lot because I'm feeding a lot of people today. Okay, I'm feeding everybody today, and I'm sure they'll take home leftovers and things like that. You know, why not? Why not? Okay, so here's that. If you see any cracks, try your best to seal in the cracks, because we don't want that beautiful juice that we work so hard for to come flowing out of this meatball. All right? These here are amazing. I've actually, I'm going to tell you guys something. I've actually made meatballs before, and I put green olives in the middle, and everyone lost their everlasting mind. When they bit down into the meatball, and they saw that beautiful green olive, they thought, oh my gosh, like this is genius, and it tastes amazing. So those of you that love green olives, give that a try one day. Absolutely. Give it a try and let me know what y'all think. Okay. See that there? Ooh, eat bad boys looking good. And here's the thing about these. You don't have to turn them. At least I don't. I never, ever turn my meatballs. You sometimes, you know, if you feel like you need to, then go ahead. But I don't turn my meatballs. When, they're, when they look done, they're done. And then if you're unsure if they're done, don't worry about it because they're going into your spaghetti sauce and they're going to cook even longer, okay? So never fear or worry that they're not done because once these go down into your sauce, you know, that sauce has simmered and cooked and it's nice and hot. You put these down into that sauce and it finishes cooking. I'm going to finish making my meatballs and then I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, so here's what we have. 
we have a mini meatloaf. You better believe I'm gonna put this bad boy in the oven. I'm gonna cook it off because I don't know about you all, but I love a cold meatloaf sandwich. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cook this off just like I would bake a regular meatloaf, just a shorter time because it's small. And then I'm gonna cool it off. I'm gonna slice that bad boy and I'm gonna make a sandwich. I put a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of mayo and have a nice cold meatloaf sandwich. That's what I'm gonna do with that. Okay, we have our beautiful meatballs. I tried to make them all the same size. Let's go ahead and put them in the oven, 350 degrees, and I will let you know exactly how long they took to cook. Okay, everybody, we have our meatballs in the oven, 350 degrees. Let's go ahead and chop up our beautiful veggies. Now, if you wanna saute your garlic, by all means, you can. Okay, a lot of times I'll saute my garlic in olive oil and then I'll pour that olive oil into my sauce. But guess what? We're not doing that today. We're not doing all that today. And guess what? It's still going to be just as tasty. Okay, chop your garlic up just like so. If you wanted to slice your garlic, you can. Okay, all right. Oh, I think I want to chop it up a little bit more. No one wants to bite down into a huge piece of garlic, right? Okay, so then I'm putting my garlic into my favorite wok that I love to use. Okay, absolutely. I want to use some olive oil. I feel like when you put olive oil in your sauce, it makes for an amazing taste. Now, we're not going to use a whole lot, just a little bit, and a little bit goes a long way. Trust me when I tell you this. That's all we're going to use, all right? Beautiful. That's cold-pressed olive oil. And then, let's chop up some of our mushrooms. Those of you that are not fans of mushrooms, you don't have to use them. Okay, me and my family, we all love mushrooms. Dion, let's see, is it deep? Well, I can't really say that because Dion and Dakota, they're not really fans of mushrooms. But if I put mushrooms in something like this, they will eat it. Okay, they won't pick it out. But like if you order a pizza and you put mushrooms on it, they'll pick it off. <laughs> so I just kind of chop it medium and they will shrink, you know. But I love mushrooms in it. And we're going to put them in there. Just like this, in that manner. When you put veggies in your sauce, it really bumps up the flavor. Really, it does. It bumps up the flavor so much. Even though we got a chunky sauce and it says that it has tomato, basil, you know, um, onion. And sometimes they have pieces of carrots and things like that in it. But I feel like when I put fresh veggies, my own fresh veggies, it tastes even better. And so that's why I do it. And I love the color. I eat with my eyes first. And not to mention, a nice piece of veggie. And every bite is absolutely amazing. Okay? So we're going to chop that up. We're going to chop this green bell pepper up as well and our onion. We're going to throw it right into our pan. And now this fresh basil will not go into your sauce until the end of the cooking process, all right? Because the basil will bruise. But we'll put some in right at the last moment, and it makes for a really fresh pop. Absolutely, it does. I'm gonna cut these veggies up and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, onions and peppers are done. Let's go ahead and put our peppers in. I've already put the onions in. I threw those bad boys in there because once I got to cutting them, I got to crying, my eyes were watering. <laughs> I threw them in there. Okay, so we have our garlic and olive oil. We have our onions and mushrooms. That's a big piece. We have our onions and mushrooms and our peppers. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could saute all of these veggies up. But I feel, I feel there's no need to do that. 
And the reason why I feel no need to do that is because as long as we're gonna cook this tomato sauce, it's gonna cook for a nice amount of time. Everything's gonna cook down all together, okay? Let's go ahead and we're gonna put two tablespoons of tomato paste in there. That's all you need is two tablespoons. Me personally, I don't know about you all, but I like a nice thick sauce. I don't like for any of my sauces to be runny. Okay, and that's why I put the tomato paste in. And also it gives for um, a different taste in your sauce. Really it does, it gives like a richness when you put tomato paste in. Okay, just like that. And of course, I'm gonna take a little bit of water, just a little bit. Okay, let's do like grandma used to do. You all know your moms used to do this. Swish a little bit of water and get all that goodness out. Don't waste anything in my kitchen. <laughs> Absolutely. So then, I have the Prego, and I'm gonna use it as well. Okay, we'll do the same thing with the bottle. And don't get crazy with the water either. You don't need a whole bunch of water because we're not trying to water down our sauce. Don't put a lid on it because if you put a lid on it, you will water down the sauce as well. All right? Now, check me out. I'm gonna put some Parmesan cheese in. That's enough, okay? That's gonna give an amazing flavor. I'm gonna put two pinches of sugar. Is the sugar gonna make it sweet? No, not at all. Trust me when I tell you this. And listen here. If you're that person that says, nope, I'm, I'm not going to put, she is not going to have me putting sugar in my sauce. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And really, it's that simple. But if you have a family member or yourself that gets um, indigestion or heartburn, it's suggested that you use a little bit of sugar to cut some of the acid in all of the tomato sauce, okay? Let me grab a spoon. And I want to stir around those veggies, that olive oil, that garlic, our Parmesan cheese. Stir around all this beautiful goodness. Get it well incorporated. And then we're going to put some seasoning in. Now, if you want to use Italian seasoning, you can. Absolutely you can. But I don't need it. And the reason why I don't need it is because I'm gonna use some fresh basil. Fresh basil is gonna do it all for me, okay? So now, let's put some sea salt in. And this is before I taste it, because I know that it needs sea salt, but don't get crazy with it, that's enough. Okay, crack black pepper. I'm gonna put a nice amount of this. There you go, baby. And then let's put a nice amount, a nice amount of garlic powder. Here we go. Onion powder. And then this goes on the stove to simmer. And it's gonna simmer for at least an hour and a half, two hours. That's what I like to do. When you simmer it for a long time, the flavor gets better and better and better. Trust me when I tell you this, okay? You don't have to simmer yours that long. Honestly, if you wanted to do an hour or 45 minutes, you can. But like I said, the flavor gets much deeper and it gets, it's amazing. It gets amazing the longer that it cooks, all right? So this is gonna go on the stove, uncovered, on a low heat, just to simmer. We have our meatballs. I'm gonna give this a taste. Oh, ooh, one more time. Mmm, uh-huh. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Hooey, that sauce tastes good. We haven't even heated it up yet. All right, this is gonna go on and meet me over to my stove and we'll start on our spaghetti. The spaghetti that I like to use is thin spaghetti. I never like to use a thick noodle. I always like thin spaghetti, not angel hair pasta. Not angel hair pasta, but just thin spaghetti. Okay, everybody, my water is boiling. Anytime you make water 
or not water. <laughs> Anytime you make noodles or potatoes, you always want to salt your water. Don't get crazy with it, but put some, you know, put some salt in there. And I'm going to use a one pound box. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the other one pound box. Now, it's up to your discretion whether you want to break your noodles. Some people like to break their noodles. Me, I just kind of throw it in there. I used to, years ago, I used to break my noodles, but I find that there's really no reason to do that. Okay? So then what will happen is they will start to wilt down. And as, see that? And as they start to wilt down, you wanna give them a stir so you can make sure that they don't stick together. What I'm gonna to do today, because I'm not gonna mix my meatball sauce in with my noodles today. Always, we always mix our sauce and our noodles together. But today is gonna to be a little different. It's gonna be separate. So I wanna put some beautiful olive oil in there so that I can make sure that my noodles do not stick, okay? If I was going to mix the sauce and my noodles, hold on, I have a spaghetti noodle right here that I need to grab. Um, if I was going to mix the sauce and noodles, I wouldn't have to put the olive oil in, okay? And you can understand that. Let me have a little bit more noodles because in this household we absolutely adore spaghetti noodles okay who we I know I do I love spaghetti noodles when I was younger I would eat the plain spaghetti noodles and I'd put a little bit of sugar and then I put Parmesan cheese on the spaghetti noodles alone that's how much I loved them and I still love spaghetti noodles today <laughs> okay so we have our sauce and it's doing just beautiful. I have not put the basil in yet. Remember I said the basil will not go in until the last moment. Now this here, this is Frigio. Okay, I might be saying it the wrong way. But this is Parmesan Reggiano and it's absolutely amazing. Okay, if y'all never had this before, you better get you some. This is what we're going to put on top of our spaghetti. Okay, and right here I have garlic knots that will go in the oven for about seven to eight minutes, and they cook up just beautifully. Okay, you can see how our noodles have wilted down. I'm just going to cook them for 11 minutes. 11 minutes is going to give you that nice and al dente noodle. You never want your noodles to be smushy. Always al dente, and what al dente means is it's chewy to the tooth. Okay. Let's take a peek in at, at our meatballs in the oven. <clears throat> okay, I hope that you all can see them. They're cooking up just beautifully. You don't have to turn them. Don't worry about them. Here in a few minutes, they'll be done. They've cooked for 35 minutes. I'll probably take them out after 45 minutes of cooking the meatballs. Our noodles are almost done. We're gonna be ready to drain them. Okay, and what I like to do is I like to run a little bit of cold water on top of my noodles so that I can stop the cooking process because even once you take them out, they'll continue to cook and you don't want mushy noodles. So you run them under a little bit of cold water, okay? And then I'll put once again, just a tad bit of olive oil throughout my noodles, okay? And you can see our sauce is doing just beautiful. My noodles are cooked up just beautifully. Let's go ahead and drain our beautiful noodles, okay? Oh, just like so, all right? And really, it's that simple. I'm gonna put some cold water on. Noodles are nice and drained. Put you a little bit of olive oil. Don't get crazy with it. All you need is a little. All right. Give it a nice toss. 
just like so, and your noodles are ready. Now, sometimes I'll put about this much cold water in the bottom of my noodles. Sometimes I do that. I'm not gonna do it today. Okay, everyone, look at our beautiful, beautiful meatballs, okay? Now, um, I did have to drain the pan because there was some oil. There was some oil in the meatballs, you know, on the pan, so I drained it. And really, it's that simple. Look at this beautiful meatball, okay? I'm going to put all of these meatballs right down into this beautiful sauce. The meatballs cook for 45 minutes, 350 degrees. You don't have to flip them. You don't have to turn them. Once you make them up, you don't have to do anything but cook them for 45 minutes, 350 degrees. Pop these bad boys into your beautiful sauce, and you have spaghetti and meatballs. I'm going to continue to put the rest of the meatballs in, just like so. I have garlic knots going in the oven, and I'll be right back. Look at this. We have the perfect, perfect amount of meatballs in our sauce. This sauce is going to be packed and filled with meatballs. With every bite that you take, you're gonna get a meatball. I hate to get spaghetti and meatballs from somewhere and they only give me a certain amount, you know, maybe three meatballs. I don't know about you all, but I want about six or seven meatballs on my plate. Really, I do. And so, you're able to make it at home and you make as much meatballs as you would like. Hoo-wee, look at that, mm, mm, mm. Okay, everybody, our sauce has simmered. I'm gonna pull off some basil pieces and just toss it in, just like so. Fresh basil is absolutely amazing in spaghetti. Try it. Try it, and you will always use it in your spaghetti. And just a little, just a little bit goes a long way. Yes. Hooey. Mm, I'm gonna turn the sauce off. It's simmered for an hour and a half, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and end the video, but I am gonna continue to let this simmer. Let's go ahead and say a nice prayer over our food. We're gonna give this a taste. I'm gonna let y'all know what this tastes like. Lord, we thank you for this food today. We thank you, Jesus, for your love time, your mercy, and your understanding, and all of your blessings. Please forgive us for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for the food that you give us daily the roof over our head, and the love that you give us daily. Amen. Look at this, everybody. Look at this mound of beautiful spaghetti and meatballs. Let's dig in and give this a try. And, of course, I have our garlic knots, and then I have Parmesan Reggiano going right on top of these bad boys. Ooh. Ooh, 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 it don't get no better than this. It don't get no better than this, guys. Let's try this. Ooh, they look so good. First thing I'm doing is I cut down into this meatball. I want you all to look at the inside of this meatball. Look at that meatball and give it a try and let me know what y'all think. That right there, this right here, oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. You better make you some. Try that. Oh! Dog. Mm, mm, mm. That right there is absolutely perfection. Delicious. My goodness. Hoo wee. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, let me taste the spaghetti. Oh, yeah. Spaghetti with this beautiful sauce, Parmesan Reggiano. Not too much sauce, guys. I'm not a really, really, really saucy person, but I like a little bit. You know, not too much, though. Let's put some Parmesan on there. Dig in. Oh, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Mouth watering. All right, let's give that a try. Mm, mm, mm. Hooey. Mm, girl. You are something else in that kitchen. Mm. Oh, I gotta sit down and enjoy this. Listen here, if you all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Click on that notification bell. God bless you all. Good night. Woo, that's good.